What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to model a custom structural connection in Revit. We're going to be exploring the steel tab in Revit 2019 and I'm going to be showing you how to create a connection between a wall and a beam. The wall will be concrete and the beam will be steel and we're going to be anchoring that steel beam inside of our wall. It's an, a really interesting topic and it sounds extremely complex, but actually it's not that difficult to do something like this in Revit using the steel tab. So before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful tutorials every week. And also, if you want to download these project files, check out my Patreon. And also there you can find some of my advanced courses. I've got like six or seven so far, and they're all over an hour long, and they're all on advanced Revit topics. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the project. So I'm just going to be using the architectural template for this project. And first, let's place a wall on which we're going to be kind of anchoring in our uh, steel beam. So I'm just going to place a wall segment over here and let's just adjust that wall. So let's make it a generic 300 millimeter wall and let's give it a concrete material. So I'm just going to go here into structure and search for some concrete. Yeah, let's use cast in place gray. Okay. So we've got our concrete wall and now let's place a beam. So for that, I'm just going to go here to level two and let me go here to steel or sorry, structure beam. And let's use the steel beam and let's go from the middle of the wall and just extend it a bit like this. Okay. Now we can't really see the beam. That's because here we're in, uh, we're, we were in course mode, but if you set it to fine, you'll be able to see it and let's just switch this to hidden line. Okay, we can see our beam, but at the moment we can't really select it. If I go to select it, nothing happens. So you can't select it because you need to go here into VR. So uh, just view range or search it here on the properties panel when nothing is selected. So you can go over here to view range or you can use the shortcut VR. And then uh, you can go here to uh, the view range and set it to unlimited for the bottom as well as the view depth. I like to set them both to unlimited. And now as you can see, we can select our beam. And I, uh, when you select the beam, this uh, little kind of structural framing component end is basically what's telling Revit where this is connecting. So I want it to go to the middle of the wall. I want to make sure that Revit knows that this is connected to this wall, but these sliders are actually just showing where like visually or where graphically uh, this will be presented. And I wanted to stop just a, a bit shy of the wall so I can put my base plate in here. Okay. So once we have this kind of set to where we want to have it, if I go in 3d, take a look, Okay, that looks fine. We have just a little bit of gap. That's what exactly what I want over here between those elements. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. And now we can start creating our structural connection for anchoring this steel element into our concrete wall. So for that, we need to go here to the steel tab. If you don't have a steel tab, you're probably not using Revit 2019 or you're using the Revit LT version of Revit 2019. So in those cases, you won't be able to follow. But if you want to check out how to download Revit 2019. I'm going to be leaving a link in the description so you can follow that and download the software and then you can follow along with this tutorial and of course you'll get all of the features that come along with Revit 2019. Okay, so for modeling this first we need to start off with a plate. So for that let's go here to fabrication elements and go with a plate. Once you select the plate you need to wait for a second for Revit to kind of recalculate and now you can start creating a plate. So I'm just going to go here to set reference plane, pick a plane, and let's pick this face over here. And then to model the plate, I'm just going to go to south elevation and here again, set this to fine so you can see your, uh, your beam. And if I go here to rectangle, unfortunately, I don't have the offset option, which is kind of a, uh, that's too bad, but I'm just going to go like this. Now I'm going to manually kind of give it an offset. So you just hover over this edge, hit tab once and then select and let's give it like, I don't know, like 60 millimeters on each side. So here change this dimension, 60 millimeters. 
60 millimeters tab okay and let's do the same on the bottom here 60 okay so once we have this plate we can go into 3d hit finish and nothing happens so here we've got a problem it says the created elements are only visible in detail level fine so we need to set the detail level from medium to fine and now we can see our base plate but as you can see uh, this is kind of going inside of our base plate and I don't want that so I'm just going to go here to level 1 to see that or sorry level 2 and here I can see my beam but I don't see my base plate so what gives so the the thing is the problem is is visibility graphics so here uh, if nothing is selected in the view you can go to the properties tab and you've got your visibility graphics overrides and you can either go here into edit or alternatively you can use the shortcut vg and just start that uh, menu up now here if you scroll down on model categories all the way down to structural connections maybe extend this a little bit yeah here we go so we've got these structural connections and as you can see they're checked so they should be visible but if I expand this menu you're going to notice that most of them are not checked so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of them just hold the shift key and select all of them okay so now once all of them are checked I can hit apply okay and as you can see we have our base plate now I'm just going to select this and extend it just a little bit I want still to have a bit of a gap between these things so something like that okay and you can adjust the thickness of the base plate just by selecting it and here you can choose uh, the type or sorry the material also you can choose the thickness over here and you can give it some coating if you want to have some coating on there okay so I'm just going to leave it at the stock like 12.7 for this one that's millimeters by the way so let me just go into 3d and this is what we have okay so now I need additional two plates here on both sides of this uh, I beam so for that let's go here to plate again set work plane pick a plane okay pick this plane now this is only showing one line but if you can zoom out you're going to notice that it highlights this line and this line that basically means that it's this vertical face of this I beam so once we have that we can go here into rectangle and create a rectangle and we can of course try to align it for that let's use the align tool and align it to here like that and then for the dimensions let's go with the top offset of something like 40 the bottom offset same and here this length let's go at 200 okay so once we have this I can hit finish and here we have our new plate now I want this thing to be a bit thinner so I'm just going to switch here and put it at 9 millimeters and as you can see it's a bit thinner now I'm going to go into level 2 again and as you can see it's over here but we can just see kind of the tad of it so I'm just going to switch this to wireframe and now I can see it a lot better as you can see I'm just going to double tap the M key which is going to give me a mirror tool with a pick access option and I'm just going to, just going to pick the middle of this structural framing and there we go so we've got our two plates over here and they're kind of going around and now we need to connect them to our base plate so the the way we can connect those is by using a weld and hopefully or luckily Revit has an option for welds so you just select that option you select the two elements you want to weld together you hit enter and then you need to pick a side now I like to zoom in and this is the side I want to pick maybe turn off pick lines it's going to be a bit easier yeah so this is the one and there we go let me just turn this back on and for the weld it's just going to appear like this it's a symbol but it gives you like the weld and then you'll know that here you have a weld and here you can choose a type of a weld I really don't know any of these what these mean but let's go with a fillet one and here for the thickness you can change that of course you can change the length maybe make it I don't know if I type in 20 let's see what happens yeah so I'm not going to bother too much with this weld but I'm just showing you how to create it and let's do the same one on the other side so go here to weld weld these two just hold the control key select both of them hit enter then select this edge over here 
and there we go another weld okay so once we have this welded together now we need to add some bolts to connect our um, structural connection our anchor to our uh, beam so for that you need to go to well of course bolts so you select the bolt option you select the first plate and the last plate that you want to connect you hit enter and now you have an option to choose a where will be the top face of your bolt arrangement and then uh, let's select this thing and now we can create that so you just create kind of a rectangle that's going to then be used to create basically an array for your bolts so let's go first over here let's give it an offset of I'm going to go with 35 millimeters on each side so let's go with that for some reason I cannot select this okay I'm just going to eyeball it maybe something is just a bit off 35 and on the bottom let's go with the same okay for some reason it's not giving me an option to oh I need to go from here to here there we go and let's set it to 35 okay so we've got this kind of the array outline and when you hit finish it's going to give you just four bolts but you can go over ahead over here and change that so I'm just going to change this to kind of six or sorry three by three and if I hit apply there we go so now we have a sufficient amount of bolts and if you look on the other side they're kind of connecting these two so we've got our bolts and we've got our structural connection now we just need to anchor that to our wall and for that we need to add some anchors of course so for that you just go here to bolts and you open up the drop menu and here we have some anchors now you select the face or sorry you select the element the base plate that you want to anchor you hit enter and now you select the face you select this face and you do the same rectangle thing so let's go to the other side like that and I'm just going to go to south elevation let's see for some reason the the base plate isn't visible I don't know why that is okay so here we need to go again into yeah let's undo that let's exit out of this command for now yeah uh, the problem was uh, we didn't turn on the visibility graphics for these elements so I'm just going to go here into VG go then to structural connections open that up or sorry structural connections yeah let's select these and turn them on hit apply okay yeah now we can see everything now we can finally go here into anchors open up the 3d view close this let's select this okay anchors selected hit enter select the face okay finally now we can edit this so let's go back into south elevation and this was I believe 60 so let's go here in 30 so let's do it in the middle here let's do at 30 as well this side too and the same thing on the bottom let's go with 30 okay hit finish and again you get four in this case not bolts they're anchors I'm just going to switch this to the uh, J round anchor I prefer that one and uh, of course you can add some changes like you can change the uh, diameter you can change the assembly the length all of those I'm only interested in adding just a couple of more here so for this side I'm going to add four hit apply okay wrong side so let's switch here hit apply and there we go okay this is looking very good let's make it a bit thicker so three quarters of an inch yeah we've got some nice thick ones and if I go like this let's go into graphic display options maybe turn on transparency a bit and there we go so you can see our anchors are firmly anchoring this within our wall and we can switch this maybe to realistic and still it looks cool so there we go that's how you create these custom uh, anchors or custom 
elements for steel connections or for steel elements within Revit. So that's how you can create them. You can also go now and create a structural connection. So you can go here to structural connection, hit enter. So here we've got this generic one and we can customize it. So we can create a new one. So let's just call it custom connection, hit OK. And now we can add elements and let's add this, add that. Can I do like a selection? Yeah, there we go. So we've added all of these elements and now if I hit finish, okay. So this is now kind of a complete structural connection which I can add to maybe a next beam that I insert over here. I can just copy this structural connection over there. So as you can see, it's called custom connection and here maybe we can add some parameters for it. But anyway, so that's how you create these custom structural connections or pretty much any steel elements that are custom built using plates, bolts and welds. And yeah, that's it. So if you want to download this project file, check out my Patreon, first link in the description, or if you want some advanced Revit uh, courses that are all uh, over hour long, again, check out my Patreon, I'm making those each week one new one hour course. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something new and exciting. And of course, subscribe, like and share this video. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.